Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I really wanted to sit down and kind of do a video similar to my previous video. If you haven't seen that, make sure you guys check it out. My previous video was I did my favorite slash affordable makeup favorites and just like what my recommendations were. And I wanted to do that, but with high-end makeup this time because I know that there are people out there who want to spend some coin and want to splurge at Sephora from time to time. So if you guys want to see what I recommend, what my favorite high-end makeup is, make sure you keep on watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you are notified each time that I upload and make sure you check my social medias out. They are here on the page as well as down in the description bar. Let's jump right into the video guys. So first let's start with primer. I have a few options here. The first one that I'm going to mention, this is what I use for my face today. This is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer. This is a primer and a moisturizer in one. This is so good you guys. Sometimes I use this on its own by itself without any makeup to be honest because it feels so good. It's a very watery consistency and it just melts right into the skin. Almost like a gel moisturizer kind of but it feels like water it feels so good it's very hydrating to the skin if you have dry skin i highly 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 recommend this product it will do wonders for your dry skin and i think it has hyaluronic acid in it yes it has hyaluronic acid and niacinamide in it which are two really really good ingredients next i also really really love the fenty beauty hydrating primer this is super good as well this leaves your skin really really glowy and with all these primers that I'm going to show you foundation blends beautifully over them all makeup blends beautifully over them but the Fenty one is so hydrating feels really really good on the skin the only thing is it does have a fragrance it has that typical Fenty fragrance so if you are a little sensitive to fragrance you might not like the fragrance of it but it looks so beautiful on the skin it keeps your skin really plump and hydrated and next here this has become one of my new favorites this is my one of the newer purchases that I've made when since buying like high-end makeup because I haven't really been buying a lot of makeup recently. This is the Dominique Cosmetics hydrating primer and this is similar to the Smashbox primer. It's very like watery and gel-like and it just melts right into the skin. Your skin just drinks it right up. The scent isn't too strong. It kind of smells like cucumber, bamboo type of smell. It's kind of like the vibe that I get from it, but it seeps right into the skin, makes your skin feel hydrated, plump, and overall it just, it makes the skin feel really good and looks super glowy and dewy. I do have dry skin, so naturally a lot of the face products that I use are catered for dry skin, but I think oily skin or normal or combination skin could use these primers as well. Now, for my girls that like to use a facial oil, I got you in this video. I really like the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Oil. This is so good, you guys. Now, I like to use this when I'm using a really, really mattifying foundation. So I don't wanna use this oil when I'm using a hydrating foundation just because I feel like my skin can look too glowy and too greasy. But if you have dry skin like me, but you still want the longevity of a foundation, which usually comes in the matte versions of foundations, I think they tend to last longer than hydrating foundations. I definitely recommend this primer oil. It feels so good on the skin. I'm a big oil person, especially in my skincare. So I like that there are oils out there that you can incorporate in your makeup routine too. So this is a really good one for dry skin as well. And for my girls who like a pore filling putty type of primer, we got the Tatcha Silk canvas primer. Now this is very pricey so I definitely recommend that you pick up the mini size first see if you like it and then pick up the big version. This is a balm consistency as you can see very putty. The elf putty primer is a dupe for this but this is like the high-end version of it obviously and this is really going to fill in your pores and smooth out your texture your fine lines and yeah I really like this for when I feel like my pores are looking extra large and it doesn't hydrate the skin though I would say it just kind of leaves your skin very normal so if you're looking for like a mattifying or hydrating benefit from that I don't really think you get one I think it just leaves the skin with a normal finish but that is really really good for filling in the pores for my guys and gals out there that have oily skin this primer is top notch this is the Smashbox photo finish oil and shine control this is so so good you guys it instantly mattifies your skin but it doesn't leave your skin like dry or feeling tight or anything like that and makeup looks really really beautiful over the this primer. I really like Smashbox for their primers. So this is what I recommend if you have really oily skin because maybe you can't use a hydrating
hydrating primer and I totally get that. Not everybody can, but this is good. I like to use this in my T-zone because I do get some shine in my T-zone, but for me, it's not too much that it looks oily, but for other people I can understand. So definitely, if you have oily skin, you will seriously love this primer. Next, we're gonna jump into foundation. The foundation that I am wearing today, this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. This is really good for dry skin too, obviously. I don't think it's overly glowy, okay? I think it's more of like a natural glow, right? Like your skin kind of has a glow to it, but it's not over the top. I have a review of this on my channel and my first review I hated it to be honest like I just I didn't like this foundation and then I gave it a second chance and I kind of started to come around a little bit and I did kind of like it I would say the finish like I said it's more natural dewy but not like over the top dewy dewy so if you're looking for like an extra glowy foundation this isn't it but this is really good full coverage covers up your blemishes this is what I'm wearing in today's video and it just blends really really nicely into the skin for those of you wondering I'm in the shade 110 see if you have a similar skin tone as me but you can see the finish looks really really beautiful on my skin and yes I do have a lot of breakouts right now the mask knee is real you guys my face is super dry the masks have been drying out my skin like crazy but the finish is really really beautiful with that foundation another foundation I would recommend this is the dose of colors foundation the meet your hue foundation and this is also I would say a natural finish long wearing it definitely you can build this up I've definitely worn two to three layers of this and it doesn't look cakey at all it looks really beautiful on the skin I'm in the shade 105 fair this is a really good foundation as well it is a natural finish I would say but it's very buildable I've definitely put two to three layers on at a time and it looks beautiful it doesn't look cakey covers really really well I think a lot of skin types could wear this foundation because it is a natural finish it's not catered to oily skin specifically it's not catered to dry skin specifically I do think all skin types could wear that the next foundation we have here this is the Fenty Beauty hydrating foundation this is one of my favorite foundations it looks so so good on dry skin you guys I can't even tell you how good it looks full coverage blends like a dream seamlessly effortlessly into the skin it's definitely one of my favorite high-end foundations that I own for sure probably my number one if I'm being honest it just looks so good it doesn't matter how bad your skin looks underneath this foundation just looks so so good over it I don't know what it is and if you pair it with the hydrating primer from the same brand it's like it's the best combo ever it looks so so good together so if you have super dry dehydrated skin I definitely definitely say try this one first and for my girls who prefer a stick foundation and guys I don't want to be rude for my guys and gals because I know there's both genders out there that like to wear makeup if you're into a stick foundation this is the hourglass stick foundation the banish I really like this one as well really great coverage and it blends really good I feel like with with some stick foundations they don't blend as good and there's not as much coverage sometimes but with this really good coverage it's really buildable and yeah it just looks so good on the skin almost like you have a filter on your skin like you photoshopped your skin that's kind of like the vibe I get from this foundation I'm in the shade alabaster and yeah I think it looks really really good I like the applicator it's triangle which is so different from most stick foundations most stick foundations it are in a circle. So I like that that's in a triangle. You can kind of get in the nooks and crannies of your face. So I really like that for stick foundation. Let's move on to concealer. For my people that like a potted concealer, this is the NARS concealer. This is their soft matte concealer. I like this. This is matte though. So if you have dry under eyes, I wouldn't recommend it, but it's very full coverage. A little bit goes a super, super long way. I know this pot is super small, but honestly, I think it's gonna last you because you barely need to dip into this to get any like full coverage you know what I mean like it's just a little dip in and you have full coverage I like this if I want to use more of a potted concealer I'm not the biggest potted concealer fan I'll be honest I prefer a doe foot liquid concealer but if you like potted concealers and you have dry under eyes and you want like more of a matte under eye you'll really like the NARS potted concealer if you don't want to use a potted concealer but you want the liquid version of that this is the NARS creamy concealer I have the shade light chantilly in both the potted and this and this is really nice as well I don't think it's full coverage I 
think it's light to medium in my opinion. I really have to go in and build up the pigment with this, but this is really good. It's a doe foot applicator and I don't find it to be as drying as the potted concealer, but it covers really well. It covers your dark circles, doesn't settle into your fine lines and overall it just looks really good. Looks really good in pictures too. I feel like sometimes your concealer, like, I don't know. I feel like sometimes they don't look good in photos. If you know what I mean? Like it can look a little dry under your eyes, it can look a little cakey under your eyes. With that concealer, I think it looks so so good in photos. And lastly, this is probably my favorite out of all of the concealers. This is the Benefit Boing Concealer, the Cakeless Concealer. I would say, I feel like if you keep going in with it though, over and over, it eventually will become cakey. I don't really like that makeup brands market cakeless because the more product you go in with, naturally products will become cakey. Like it's just a thing, but this is really good. I have the shade number two and this is very peach undertone. So it's going to cancel out any blue or purple hues under your eyes. So this is what I'm wearing today. And you can see, you can't even see my dark circles. It's very brightening under the eye full, full coverage, and you only need a little bit to go a long way. And the doe foot applicator on this is interesting. I know you can't see it, but where you see the concealer there, it has like a hole in the doe foot applicator, like a literal hole. I don't even know how to describe it. And like the packaging is so cute. It looks like a little pencil. I think this was like their back to school collection or something like that. Really love that concealer. Now for powders, I have three here. You guys know Too Faced. Ethereal Setting Powder. This is gonna make your skin look smooth, make your skin look like you have a filter on your face. It's the powder that I'm wearing now, and I love it. It looks so good over any foundation and concealer. It makes any foundation concealer look terrific. And I also really like the Laura Mercier powder. I find this to be similar like the Too Faced. It makes your skin look super smooth. I feel like my pores look smaller when I go in with these two powders and yeah, they make my makeup last all day. Your makeup's not going anywhere. It's not transferring and they just leave a beautiful airbrush look over the skin. I also have the Cover FX powder. This isn't as good as the other two in my opinion, but this is kind of tinted. So I feel like this gives you a little extra coverage. Not all powders will give you extra coverage if they're translucent. This is translucent, but it has like a little tint to it. So if you're looking for a powder that is gonna give you extra coverage on top of your foundation and concealer, I definitely recommend this. It doesn't look cakey on the skin. None of these do. And it just makes your skin last. It makes the makeup overall look really, really good. For contour, I am in love with the Fenty Beauty contour. You guys know this is so good. I talk about this in a lot of my videos. This is the shade in the sun and I like this. I'm wearing it today. It blends really, really nice on the skin. Very pigmented. I mean, you don't even have to go in with a lot and you don't even have to take a lot of time blending either. It just, it melts like butter, okay? It blends like butter right into the skin. I love it. If you want a cream product, they also have cream concealers that they just came out with not too long ago. This is the shade Butter Biscuit, number two. And this this is really nice as well. It kind of does the same thing as the powdered version. Honestly, it blends really nicely, very pigmented. So I do like them both. And I also have here the Marc Jacobs. This is my newest bronzer along with the Fenty Cream Bronzer. This is their Tantastic Bronzer. You can see this thing is freaking huge. It's literally bigger than like almost my my face. This is really good too. All of these, they blend really good, especially depending on the type of brush you're using. Obviously you have to be using a good brush to get some good pigmentation. I feel sometimes out of certain bronzers. These blend really, really nice and they just bring a nice color back to the skin, you guys. I don't know what it is about a high-end bronzer, but like it makes me feel bougie sometimes. <laughs> For blush, I actually don't own a high-end blush to be honest. I pretty much only buy blushes from the drugstore. I just don't feel like it's necessary to buy a high-end blush, um, but I do have some cream blushes from Rare Beauty that I guess could be considered high-end. These are great, super, super pigmented. I mean, you just need one dot and that is it. Like, if you go in with like more than two dots, it's too much. It's, they're very, very pigmented. They blend really, really nicely though. So if you are on the market for a cream blush, I definitely would look into those. Look into Rare Beauty, the brand, it's an amazing brand. I did a full review on Rare Beauty. You guys can check that out on my channel if you want. For highlighters, the highlighter I'm wearing today, as you guys can see, looks really, really blinding. This is the Milk Makeup Highlighter. This is their Flex Highlighter. I have the shade Iced, which is a really pretty gold. You can see it's 
super blinding, super pigmented. A little goes a long way. You do not need a lot. When looking at this pan, it does look glittery. I would say it has like a slight glitter in it, but on the face, it doesn't look glittery. It just looks like beaming. You know what I mean? You can't see glitter on the face. You, you don't see any glitter fallout either. So yeah, I definitely like this. I don't think it emphasizes your texture, which is a huge thing for me because most highlighters emphasize your texture. I also really like Ofra for their highlighters. This is the Nikki Tutorials highlighter and Glazed Donut. This is probably the most blinding highlighter that I own. I'm telling you, you are gonna be seen from the freaking moon. It's that pigmented. So if you don't like a beaming highlighter, that highlighter's not for you, sis. It's so pigmented, like, I sometimes overdo it and I am only like lightly tapping in and sometimes I overdo it. But you know what? I'm here for a blinding highlight. So if you are too, you're really gonna love that. There's different shades in this as well. They have, I think three shades maybe, I don't know. This is the lightest shade, um, but they do have a deeper skin tone shade as well that might work for darker skin types. Fenty Beauty has some really great highlighters as well. This is their Lightning Dust and Crystal Fire highlighters. These are really, really good because on one side you have kind of more of a subtle highlight so if you don't want a blinding highlight you want more subtle you get that and then you have the more blinding highlight on the other side which is great as well so I like that you get two highlighters in one with the Fenty Beauty I mean they do have some Fenty Beauty ones that are it's just one highlighter but I like these little duos where you get two of them uh, I think that's just like a really smart idea so if you want two for the price of one Fenty Beauty is where it's at because it comes with a subtle and it also comes with the beaming so you kind of get the best of both worlds and my other favorite high-end bronzer is y'all my lips you guys see me keep licking my lips my lips feel hella hella dry we put on some lip gloss this is from Kristen Dominique's this is probably the only high-end lip product that I own I don't think you need to own high-end lip products as well I think those are kind of unnecessary too but this is Kristen Dominique and it's so good it's so good. you guys know I apply in every video also I know I'm off the topic of the highlighters but real quick rare beauty their liquid lipsticks top-notch they aren't going anywhere first of all and they're super pigmented and they're super comfortable you don't even feel them on your lips and they don't even sink into your lip lines so this is probably I lied about the lip gloss this is probably my most expensive lip liquid lipstick that I own so just wanted to point that out in my video back to highlighters this is the benefit cookie highlighter this is more of like a pink and a gold mix I really really like this I am not the biggest fan of benefit I will say I like some of their products I don't like every product but I like like some of their product but this by far is my favorite product from them I like their brow products and I also like this so this is really blinding as well keep in mind so as you can tell I'm a very blinding highlight type of person and I know not everybody is like that I totally get it but with these highlighters I don't feel like they emphasize texture and I feel that you can build them up I think you can make them slightly subtle but it's kind of hard because if you go in with a heavy hand it's like overboard you know what I mean so let's move on to the brows now for my guys and gals that like a potted like a dip brow this is the Anastasia dip brow I have the shade taupe that's the shade that I get in every dip brow I don't like dip brow products to be honest I I don't know I find them to be too pigmented and I just prefer a pencil I just think it's easier to line the brows with a pencil but this is really pigmented very smooth it blends really really nice so if you like a pot you're gonna like this for benefit like I just mentioned I do like their brow products this is their precisely my brow pencil I use this in my brows today and this is really really nice I like the packaging and I feel like you can get hair like strokes with this it's not my first choice when it comes to my brows, I do use a lot of drugstore brow products because I don't feel like you need to buy high-end brow products all the time, but this is really, really nice as well. It's pigmented. I think I have the shade... I have the shade number two for those of you that are wondering. It's more of like a taupe color. Another brow pencil that I really like, this is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. This, you guys, I use this for quite some time, not gonna lie. I use this for a very long time and I loved it. It just did something to my brows that I can't even explain, but I, I loved it so much. I do, it's actually almost empty. I don't use it as much anymore, but it really does outline the brows well. You can get hair like strokes with it as well. It's very pigmented. It's not too waxy. Um, I feel like some products, they're just 
too waxy and I do not like waxy products. This is a little waxy, but I don't think it's over the top waxy, but it is a little waxy. For brow gels, I really like the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. This is a clear brow gel. It's like hair gel or hairspray, but for your eyebrows. If you don't want your eyebrows to move all day, I definitely recommend that brow product. If you're looking for a tinted brow gel, I really like the Gimme Brow from Benefit. First of all, the applicator on this is so tiny. I love it. Oh my gosh, it's the tiniest little applicator, which I think is great because it's so easy to get in to your brows with a tiny applicator. I've used applicators that are way too big and then you get the product like above your brows or like on your eyeshadow and it's just not a good look, but this is really good. I think that you could just use this. I don't even think you need to go in with a pencil to line your brows. I think you can just use this with how tinted it is and it will make your brows look like they're filled in. And I just, I love it. I used it today to fill in my brows or to set my brows I mean and it keeps your brow hairs in place as well so this is definitely my favorite tinted brow gel from Sephora. Let's go in with eyeshadow so for eyeshadow primer I really like the MAC Painterly Paint Pot that's what I use today the P. Louise base is good as well those are the only two that I own <laughs> to be honest so I like the Painterly Paint Pot I definitely recommend an eyeshadow primer if you have oily eyelids because it just helps your eyeshadow stay in place it helps your eyeshadow colors pop make them more vibrant love that for eyeshadows I don't own a lot of eyeshadow palettes if I'm being honest the only high-end eyeshadow palettes that I own are the Anastasia palettes and one other palette that I'm going to show you but this is the Anastasia Jackie Ina palette right here this is the palette that I used on my eyes today and you can see this is the look that I came up with which is a really nice fall look love the Anastasia palettes I will say there's a lot of fallout in them though so if fallout is a big deal to you you might not like them but I think they're really really pigmented especially modern renaissance their very first palette oh my god let me show it to you so you know which one i'm talking about their first one modern renaissance i should have also featured this in the video today this is number one my favorite high-end eyeshadow palette that I own to be honest they just they blend so good I don't even know how to describe it but they blend really well again it's just the fallout that can be a problem for some people and this next palette is my most expensive palette I used to use it a lot when I first got it I don't use it as much anymore but it's still a favorite of mine from Sephora because it was my first ever high-end eyeshadow palette this is from Huda Beauty this is I don't even know what the name of this is. What is this? Textured eyeshadow palette. The rose gold one. The very first one she came out with. You guys, this was trending everywhere when this first came out. This is like $65. I probably would never spend $65 on an eyeshadow palette again. But at the time, this was so popular. I love this. This blends really well as well. And these glitter foil shadows up here, they're really pigmented, okay? For eyeliner, again, I don't own an eyeliner that's high end. But the Rare Beauty eyeliner, this is so pigmented, you guys. If you saw Saw my rare beauty video it is on my channel if you didn't see it but this is really 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 pigmented it's super super black so I like that it has a ball in it too so you can shake it up and I like oops I got some of my finger I like that it is a felt tip as well the only thing is I think that the packaging will get dirty fast because when you pull the lid off the tip does hit the lid so the lid is definitely gonna get dirty but that's the only high-end liquid eyeliner that I have and I really like it for mascara you guys know Tarte Big Ego. It's what I've been using in literally every video. I also really like the NARS Climax Mascara and I also really like the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. With all these mascaras, they definitely separate your lashes. They make your lashes look very voluminous, very lengthy, very long. They're really good to prep your regular lashes for false lashes. Now I don't own any high-end false lashes either. I'm a drugstore eyelash gal and these, the eyelashes that I'm wearing today are the Kiss 01 lashes, but these mascaras are really, really good. They have really big applicators and I kind of like that for the top lashes, not so much for the bottom, but these are really nice, very pigmented. The only thing I don't like is with the Tarte and the Milk makeup, they take a very long time to dry. So I do go in with my fan to dry them faster just because I'm impatient, but these are really really good and my top favorite mascaras from Sephora and for setting spray I already mentioned the lips real quick out of order, but for setting spray my top favorite is the 
Urban Decay All Nighter. You guys remember this was huge and it's still very huge. If you want a mattifying setting spray, that's not too drying, but sets your makeup so good that it doesn't budge, it doesn't transfer, it doesn't sweat off, it doesn't come off in the rain. This is where it's at, okay? This is your girl right here. This stuff works so good. I absolutely love it. I will use it if I am gonna be wearing my makeup very long term, like 12 plus hours. I will use this. It's not my first go-to. I usually will use a, a hydrating, a more hydrating setting spray, but this on a real, event or occasion, this comes in clutch. I'm telling you, it leaves your skin looking beautifully set. Your makeup's not going anywhere. It enhances your highlighter. So it just, overall, it does the job. It's the best setting spray out on the market at the at Sephora, in my opinion. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. These are all of my favorite high-end makeup products. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below what you guys like. What are your favorite high-end Products. I would love to have a conversation with you guys. So yeah, that is it for this video. Let me know what you don't like too. I would also like to talk about that and why you don't like it. Because let's be honest, what works for me might not work for you and what works for you might not work for me. And I just love having conversations about that. So yeah, guys, that is it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.